Hey guys, I hope that you are doing well today. I am actually sitting at my doctor's office. I um, was supposed to have an appointment at 9.30 and um, my surgeon had some delays and they didn't have an exam room and then he had a 10 o'clock meeting and so he's not gonna be here for like 20 minutes. And so I thought that I would just, I was gonna do this update when I got home but since I'm having to wait so long and I'm here, I just thought that I would do it here in the waiting room. And I told the nurse, I said, I'm gonna just go on Facebook Live right now. And she was like, okay. So here I am. Hi, it's actually kind of nice. I've got this rolly chair, which I don't have at home. And I think I can like stand up and show you some things. I actually made notes and I left them here on the chair. So just hold on one second. Okay, so. It has been one month since my surgery. Um, if you don't know or haven't been following along or haven't seen any of my other videos, um, on December 2nd, I had um, a breast reduction. Um, I had an abdominal repair. I had a three to four inch tear um, in my abdomen. Um, it's called diastasis recti. It's very common with women who have had multiple children. Um, and that hole was giving me a lot of low back pain. And so I was having neck pain and shoulder pain um, and mid back pain from my breasts and then low back pain from the diastasis. Um, and so since I was getting, the way, the way they repair the diastasis is they sew your abdomen back together. Um, and so since I was gonna be getting that done, um, I went ahead and elected to have um, a full abdominal plasty and tummy tuck with that. I had a lot of extra skin. I gained 50 to 60 pounds with every one of my pregnancies. Um, and so I just had a lot of extra skin that I was probably never gonna be able to get rid of, even if I you know, did lose a ton of weight and, and you know, worked really hard on that, I still would have that skin. And so um, since we were doing that repair at the same time, I did the tummy tuck as well. So um, the in, my insurance covered the breast reduction and then we saved and paid for um, the abdominal plasty. So I'm one month out. I go back to work um, in about a week and a half, um, January 9th. Um, I think that it's still going to be hard for me to work full days, so I might be doing some half days um, as I'm getting started going back to work. Um, my pain level certainly has improved from where it was a month ago, but I honestly am not where I thought I would be. Um, I talked to a lot of people who were like, oh, you know, two weeks out, three weeks out, I was doing great. I am not doing, I don't think I'm doing great. I think I'm doing well. Um, obviously, I drove myself here to the doctor. I'm dressed, I have makeup on. So certainly, if you look at my earlier videos, I have improved. Um, but I'm still experiencing a lot of pain. Um, I'm on still two pain medications. Um, I'm on gabapentin, if you know drugs, and um, oxycodone. Um, the goal is for me to be taking oxycodone just in the morning and at night before bed, and then um, I take the gabapentin three times a day. Um, and then during the day, I'm supposed to just take Advil and Tylenol. Um, I'm having a hard time with that by late afternoon. Um, I'm still sleeping every single day. I'm taking a nap every afternoon for a couple of hours. I think that's helping with the pain and helping me manage it. Um, I, right now I'm still taking about three oxycodone a day. So I'm definitely still having pain um, and I can't lift and that's really hard um, with being a mom with three kids um, and one of them being two and in a crib and a car seat. Um, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to, but I do like lift Ezra from like the floor to my lap. Like I'll do like that type of like little lifting. I don't carry him. I don't lift him out of bed or anything like that. Um, yesterday, I did lift him into his car seat and that I probably shouldn't have done that. It was hard um, to do that. Um, so, and he said it will probably be at least February before I'm able to like carry him and I wonder if it will even be longer than that. Um, my restriction right now is three pounds that I'm really not supposed to lift anything more than three pounds. And obviously Ezra is way more than that. Um, as far as sleep, um, I am still sleeping in a um, recliner. Um, I am not sleeping in bed yet. I will nap in bed, but it is very, very hard for me to get up from a laying down position. So um, I am sleeping in a 
a lift recliner chair so that we got on Craigslist. And so it, you know, I have a little remote that it like lifts me up so that I can get out of the chair. Um, and so because of that, I find that I'm sleeping better in that. I'm also normally a tummy sleeper and I'm concerned that if I were to sleep in my normal bed that I would maybe be more apt to turn to my stomach. Um, my surgeon did say that I can sleep on my side, but that's not really comfortable for me um, to do that. So um, I'm still sleeping in the chair. I, friends told me that I'd probably be in that like three to four weeks. So I'm kind of right in there. Um, I think I'll probably sleep in it another a week or two, I think. Um, I'm sleeping okay. I'm waking up though. It kind of with the pain medicine cycle. Um, so I'm not getting long, long stretches of sleep, um, but I'm doing okay. Like I think I slept pretty solid for six hours last night. Um, my energy tends to be better in the morning. Um, so if I do want to like go out and try to do an errand or, you know, like this doctor's appointment, like we, we do that in the morning because I really, by lunchtime, I'm hurting, I need sleep, um, I'm just, not running kind of at the level that I'm at right now. Um, as for the breast reduction, um, and I, my last video, I feel like I kind of went into this a lot. Um, so with uh, the type of breast reduction that I had, they um, cut around the nipples and then down the breast and then under, okay? And so all of that is stary stripped. And so a week ago, I graduated from stary strips to tape. And so um, I don't have anything on the underside anymore, but going up my breast and around my nipple is all taped. And so one of the things that I'm here at the doctor today is um, to get retaped. Some of that tape is coming off. Um, I can shower, which is a wonderful thing. I went three weeks without a shower. Um, I was just doing, you know, like sponge bath type stuff and cleansing cloth. Um, so I think the shower kind of is partly why those um, T that tape is coming off. So I'm having my surgeon look at that. And I also got an infection last week, which isn't terribly uncommon um, on my breasts. And so I'm taking um, a antibiotic for that. And so I wanted to get checked for that as well. Um, I'll show you guys since it's kind of easier for me to do that when I've been doing this at home, I think. And feel free to ask questions. I can see all of your comments. So hopefully, let's see, this is horizontal. Hang on, let me back up. Okay, so I'm in this kind of flowy top, but I'll show you. So I've got this brace on that goes all the way up and I wear it all the way around me and it kind of comes up. I've got to keep it really tight, kind of like I'm swollen all the way. Can you, I don't know if you can see, I'm swollen like all the way down to here and then all the way up. And that swelling will take um, several months to go down. Um, so I wear that and I actually am supposed to wear um, Spanx under that as well because I was coming to the doctor today. I didn't put, um, I found, I think it was maybe Jockey at Macy's that make um, a Spanx that's just for your midsection, um, which is really nice. Like it's not the shorts and you're not having to deal with all of that. So um, I wear normally that. Right now I'm just wearing a tank top um, under that. So I've got that on um, and I've really been wearing when I go out just leggings. I can wear regular pants, um, but with the binder, it's just, it's just easier, I feel like, to wear leggings. Um, so I've been doing that, um, and with the breast reduction, you have to wear soft cup um, bras that um, clasp in the front, which you can't imagine how hard that is to find. I don't know why. I mean, I don't know. I've never, I guess, most people don't wear that kind, right? Like I've never shot for that. Um, oh, Tiffany, thanks for your sweet comment. Um, so anyway, I found some at Target. Um, so I'm wearing just soft cup bras that clasp in the front. Um, you can't wear like sports bras that clasp in the front because you don't want to wear anything that's constricting on your breasts. Um, and they really don't um, want you to um, sleep in your stomach because of that like compression um, on the breasts for, you know, that first few months. Um, so I see your comment, Nancy. Well, I tell what cup size I went down to. Yeah, so I went down to, I was an H cup, um, and I went down to a D cup. Um, and I'm still swollen, um, so I will get smaller than what I am right now. Um, but I hardly remember being a D cup. I think I was like maybe 15 and was a D cup. Um, so I would say that I'm more than half the size um, that I was. Um, and certainly I have been on pain medicine this whole time, but it is remarkable to me how I don't have any neck pain 
I don't have any shoulder pain, any back pain um, at all. Um, I have not had a headache in a month. Um, and I'm sure that, that some of that is due to the pain medicine, um, but it is remarkable how much better I feel um, since having the surgery, even with having, you know, all the abdominal pain that I'm still having um, and the restrictions with that. Um, I'm so, so grateful um, that I had the surgery. Um, another thing that I, I think it's interesting that maybe people don't know that I'm willing to share is when you have a breast reduction, so when you have really large breasts, um, not only do you have like all that stretched tissue um, and skin, right, um, your nipple even stretches. And so my nipples were like enormous. Um, and so they actually make the nipple smaller too. And so um, I, I've only seen them once because they've been stereo stripped and taped. Um, but they're remarkably smaller <laughs> than what they used to be. Um, there was some risk um, with having, um, when you have the breast reduction, um, that the nipples may not have feeling um, or may not even like reattach. Um, but I was fine with all of that. I thankfully didn't have any of those complications. So um, yeah, here we are one month out. Um, and so grateful that we went forward with this even though it's been hard um, I think that it was really worth it um, and particularly the breast reduction I know so many people who um, wait so long to have a breast reduction I know even my mom had a breast reduction and I was in college um, and I'm so glad that I didn't wait because I think that it, my quality of life is just going to be um, really improved um, because I'm not going to have all that pain that I had for um, so long. Oh, I see your kind comments. Thank you. Um, so anyway, there we go. There's an update of kind of where I'm at one month out. I hope you're not forgetting anything. Do you guys have any questions? Um, basically, it's been hard and it's been harder than I thought it would be. Um, I thought that I would... Um, like watch all these shows and do all this reading and you know get cards written and work on photo books and you guys like I haven't done anything like it really it's been it's been so much harder than a c-section was um than having a new baby like people said you know oh if you've had a c-section you're gonna be fine like it's been so much worse than this so much worse than than a c-section um so I I don't know if that's just my experience, but I um, I haven't read one book this month. Um, I have not sent any thank you cards. I haven't looked at photos. I have had very low energy overall, um, and it's just it's been way harder than I thought it would be. Kristen, anything you would do differently or recommend people do differently to prepare or manage for this type of surgery? Um, let's see. I think. Um, I didn't realize how much gauze I would go through. Um, that was something that um, I wasn't prepared for. I, was, I had like a single box and we went through several boxes of um, those big like gauze squares. Um, I also didn't realize like the extent of the constipation that would happen um, because of all the pain pills. Um, and I hear that that's fairly common and I've talked about that a little bit on some past Facebook lives, um, but that was an extreme issue for me um, and obviously with having abdominal surgery and um, you don't want to strain um, and it have it being backed up is painful even more so when you've had that abdominal surgery and so I was um, you know I would I would recommend buying like tucks and suppositories and Miralax and like all of that kind of stuff um, that and we didn't have any of that and just to have it on hand and then save all of your Walgreens receipts um, somebody recommended getting a walker I didn't need it we ordered one and I didn't need it so we sent it back from Amazon um, so I, those are a couple things I did the constipation was I think the biggest thing that I did not expect was going to be such like an ongoing issue um, and I can't believe I'm talking about constipation here but like it, it was a a significant issue um, and it's less so as I'm coming off the medication but that's been really hard and I don't know how you can necessarily prepare for that except for having like all of the tools um, to make it easy right with eating good food and and you know doing all of the things um, Tracy are you equally glad with your decision for the abdominal plasty um, Yes, I I really am. Um, the the tear was really necessary. Like it needed to be repaired, and it it 
I would have just had ongoing issues um, for a long time if I didn't repair it. Um, but I'm really happy that I did the abdominal plasty because I think that if I had not done a couple things, doing the abdominal plasty at the same time as the breast reduction minimized my time out of work, um, which was great. Um, I was only put under once. You know, I would have been out of work maybe three to four weeks with the breast reduction, and then I would have been out of work with the abdominal plasty, you know, six six to eight weeks. And so doing both at the same time, I think was um, a wise thing to do from a work standpoint if you're a working mom. Um, I also think for myself physically, um, if I had done the breast reduction and I hadn't done the abdominal plasty at the same time, I, I think maybe I wouldn't have been as happy with my figure or it, I wouldn't have maybe felt as um, good in my own skin. Um, and I don't mean for that to sound like shallow in any way or I just think that like, um, I had been so defined by my large breasts and um, what my figure looked like with having large breasts um, and what it made my stomach look like, even though I had a lot of excess skin and um, did not have a flat stomach at all, at all, at all, at all. Um, and so I also just think I maybe feel better about my figure um, with doing that, but really the heart of the abdominoplasty and the reason we did it was because of that tear. And I don't know if I had not had that tear if we would have done the abdominoplasty. I don't know. Um, because then it would have been just a cosmetic thing. But um, because I had that tear, because I was having that low back pain, I went through physical therapy and it didn't work. Um, my chiropractor recommended it. My general practitioner recommended it. Um, I think that it was the right decision, and I definitely think it was the right decision to do at the same time. I'll be honest, I have not had a ton of pain with the breast reduction um, compared to the abdominoplasty, and having my abdomen literally sewn back together, like I feel like I feel like a line down the center of my abdomen, um, and that you know that pulling um, of it back together. So. Um, yeah, I'm really glad that I did it at the same time, and I think that if you have some of those same issues, um, I think it's a good I think it's a good thing to do, and I think that there's some cost savings in doing it. Um, okay, let's see. Um, I feel like I lost a couple questions. Um, Kelly, yeah, it is a difficult it's a difficult recovery. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, you, Tracy, you've got the diastasis. I mean, it's just, it's hard. And I think um, waiting until you get a hernia, like, doesn't make sense to me because then I would have had some coverage for my insurance. Um, but when insurance covers part, and then if you decide to get the abdominoplasty and get, you know, that extra skin removed and some of that, um, it, um, it really complicates, I guess, the paying procedure. So in some ways, it's just easier to pay for it all out of pocket. So I'm grateful that we were able to save and do that. Um, because I, I do think that in the end, I'm just gonna feel better overall um, and have it all done all at once. So that's been really great. So, all right, well, hopefully my doctor is gonna be here soon and um, it was great to give an update. Thank you guys so much for um, your encouragement in this journey and uh, letting me be vulnerable and share about it. I think um, I'm, I haven't seen a ton of it and so I'm, really hopeful that it has been encouraging to some of you and um, or even just interesting just kind of like hearing from a regular person about it um, that's why I've done it even though it feels a little weird to talk about my constipation <laughs> but anyway thanks guys so much um, I will chat more soon but hey we're here one month out so good stuff good stuff to come so um, see ya have a happy happy new year bye